that this is a sense of relief, finally, like, what, what's been your process the whole week, not knowing who you're playing, finally, find out? We control what we can control, and that's our um, preparation mentally and physically for just another series, with regards to who we play. Um, and then we obviously watched the last, what, three games of, of the Clippers Jazz series, so you pick up certain tendencies of um, of either team while you're watching, and then as game seven unfolds, you got to get a sense of who you're going to play and get your mind wrapped around the challenges that they present and, and be ready to go tomorrow. Any concerns about the long layoff and getting back in the groove? No, nah, we've had it uh, before. I think two years ago against New Orleans, we or after the New Orleans series, we had a seven-day break and um, came out one game one. So we've done a good job of pacing ourselves with practice and stuff this week so we can get rest, get healthy, but stay sharp at the same time. And um, the adrenaline rush, getting back out on the floor, will, will kick in right away. So uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Steph, this is kind of a clash of, of styles. I mean, you guys are going to be as fast paced as you can at all times, and they may try to take you out of that and slow things down and, and uh, run their methodical system. That's our strength, and uh, we understand that. And if we allow the game to get away from us from a pace standpoint, but also a possession standpoint, where you're turning the ball over, you're giving them offensive rebounds, um, you're going to be in a tough spot. So uh, the things that we need to control, our defensive effort, obviously getting stops, but cleaning up the glass, and you know whoever gets it pushing, you know in transition. Try to you know, be playmakers and, and play fast, but smart at the same time. Um, but understand at the same time, there might be waves in the game where it slows down, but we have to still execute. And you know, if our defense shows up, uh, you know, which I know it will, it'll it'll put us in a great great position to allow the town on the other end to take over. Steph, in your mind, who's the most dangerous guy on this Jazz team, or do they have a guy? Does that fluctuate? They do about committing me. Obviously, Gordon is the most consistent threat to have a big game, but the way that they play, is, it's not as fast as we do, but it's very similar with just moving the ball and everybody touches it and everybody's a threat. So, um, you know, they rely on that third and fourth score to whoever it is, whether it's Rodney Hood, whether it's, um, you know, Diaw or Joe off the bench. Um, you know, they have a lot of guys that can score um, that you got to be ready for. Even, you know, George Hill had a, a great three-point shooting game the last game they played here, so can't sleep on anybody. And everybody individually, defensively, has to be locked in and focused and not to give up easy layups, backdoor stuff that they run, you know, open swing-swing threes that they, they rely on. So everybody got to be locked in. To have 17 blocks that first round. I mean, has he just taken that defensive level to up a notch even in this playoffs so far? For sure, yes. And um, I wouldn't say it's, it's expected. It's hard to do, obviously. <laughs> but it, the, the urgency of the moment, understanding how big possessions are in playoff games, and how much of an impact he can have on that end of the floor. Um, you know, he, he, he relishes those opportunities, so um, it's going to be another opportunity for him in this series to do it, and it may be in a different way with his versatility, being able to guard a bunch of different positions. Um, you know, we'll see how it unfolds, but I'm sure he'll have a huge impact. How does your size, uh, the size of this team across multiple positions and obviously inside, um, even affect you? Or the team? Um... Really, just on the glass, and making sure we have position to uh, to rebound. Because obviously, Rudy's a problem down down low. Um, you know, he gets a lot of tip tap, tap outs and a lot of offense rebounds that turn into easy points for him. But it's not just on you know Zaza or D West or Draymond or Javale to box him out. You got to do it by committee. But we have to be active um, to negate, you know, the size difference or size disparity they may have, and 
you just got to be physical, really. That's what playoff basketball is all about, and it's even more of an uh, importance this series. Uh, when the shot goes up, just get to the spots that you know a, a rebound is likely to go to. So you can't hang out on the three-point line. You can't you know watch. Your feet always have to be moving. Um, just trying to anticipate where the where the rebound might go, or where you know one of those guys might be going body-wise, and just try to you know knock them off the line and, and uh, let somebody else get the rebound too. So. If we're standing and watching, we're going to be in trouble. Well, Draymond said that um, the team's mentality is that Steve's not coming back, that you just kind of are going forward and expecting Mike to coach the rest of the way, and if he comes back, then it's a nice surprise, but that's, you're kind of just not expecting it. Is that, is that kind of the way you're, you're focused on it, too? I mean, we're getting updates as to how he's feeling and uh, what he's going through uh, with his treatments and everything. Uh, but the expectation is that until other, you know, we hear otherwise, Coach Brown will continue to run the show uh, with obviously Coach Kerr being on speed dial every single minute he can to you know, give his input. Uh, and I know for Coach it's important for him obviously to get 100% healthy before he comes back so he's not doing that. You know, I'm, I'm here for a day or two. Then, you know, away for a day or two kind of situation. He wants to come all the way back and be ready to go. Steph, Mike, uh, kind of was the one who proposed keeping two starters on the floor um, all game long, if, if at all possible. I mean, way back in October. How, how great was that to be able to do that and you guys keep the people flow with all those rotations? And this is obviously a smart move. You have uh, the opportunity and ability to do that, to have a rotation that is a little different than we're used to. It's not like the hockey sub situation where you, you know, you have five bench guys in at one time. But the flow and the, you know, piecing, you know, the the, the five man lineup together with, you know, mainly two starters in at all times uh, is, is big for just consistency and uh, just the rhythm uh, and allowing. The, the talent that we have to always be present on the floor. Um, and just you know, our bench is, is composed a different way this year, and it's been it's been great. What's the biggest difference? Salt Lake. Huh? How we spend your downtime, downtime in Salt Lake? A lot of FaceTime with Aisha. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, I heard it snowed last week, so I might try to go to the to the slopes. Um, go a little snowboarding, <laughs> snowmobiling. Uh, you know, hang out, hang bike. out in the altitude. I won't be riding a dirt bike. Shout out to Mad Bum. Um, nah, it's a quick, quick. Thankfully, every every game is every other day, so it's kind of a quick, quick trip. Hopefully, um, we'll, we'll use it wisely. Is that really that big of a deal? You guys are talking about some of the guys talking about we rather was in L.A. because there's a nightlife. Does it matter in the playoffs? No, guys are disciplined. They know how to handle themselves. Whatever city, obviously. Most of the guys here are more familiar with LA than Salt Lake City, but at the end of the day, if you're worried about extracurriculars during the playoffs and that's your priority, then you got it twisted already. So if it's a business trip wherever wherever we end up going, so um, we'll be ready. Off the court, a young man passed away over the weekend. He spent some time with Brody. It's apparent it's your worst nightmare. Uh, it's definitely obviously a sad development with uh, him passing and um, the impact that he had on myself, Coach Kerr, his family, even the team when he was able to come. Um, it was unbelievable and just understanding how inspirational uh, Brody was with his fight. He never lost his spirit through the whole process. Uh, even even he's in the hospital for almost two straight years. Um, he loved basketball. He loved watching us play. He loved watching me play. So I'm glad I got to meet him. Got to uh, spend some time with him, and hopefully bring a little bit of joy, you know, for him and his family um, this this past few months. And you know, we're gonna try to find a way to uh, hopefully dedicate. A lot of great things happened in this playoffs to Brody and his family, um, you know, for how much the Warriors meant to, to them. And so I obviously got my uh, Brody Strong bracelet on and I'll keep wearing it and um, 
It's just a, a, an amazing kid that dealt with a lot, but did it with such grace and, and, uh, and strength, and we can all learn from that. Steph, after the game four, you said you haven't felt that great shooting feeling for a while. Do you feel like it's a little bit stink? Because uh, after that, you guys have to pause for seven days. No, you can hold on to that because of how we practice, so uh, I'm not really worried about the break and the no rust or anything like that tomorrow. We'll be fine. And, um, like I said, that adrenaline rush tomorrow will be great, so we'll be looking forward to it. We, be we believe, guys, a lot of them will be there tomorrow. Um, is that a nice, a nice way to get this series started, honoring that group that did something pretty special for this franchise? For sure. Obviously, it's a 10-year anniversary of that. And, um, for me, I, th I don't speak for the rest of the team. It kind of means a little bit more to me because I was the one, the only one, I, the only one to wear that same uniform, uh, the old school colors and the old school logos and all that stuff. And when I first got here, that's what everybody talked about was, you know, can y'all do what the We Believe team did and mm -hmm. and whatnot. So uh, it'll be special, obviously, having Matt back on the squad. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, but what, you know, Stag Jag, BD, Monte, Petrus, Jason Richardson, um, the whole the whole crew. Uh, hope, I don't know. The cool thing would be if Andres Bedrins could get back. That's my boy. <laughs> I don't think he's, he's going to make it back from Latvia, <laughs> but that would be special. But shout out to him because he had a huge <laughs> impact on that team too. So um, it means a lot. It meant a lot for the Bay Area, obviously, and uh, to honor them during the playoff, another playoff run, coincidentally against the Jazz, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully give them some, uh, we'll rectify that situation that they went through, uh, you know, at the end of the old, we, we believe, should, uh, run. So it'll be good. Kevin said the other day how much he, he loves Draymond's trash talking. Um, it's, he grew up with so much of that, that uh, it's a, he loves it, he appreciates it, and it fuels all of you. I mean, does Draymond take it just to the right level? Yeah, it's all on the court, and yeah. no matter how, when it doesn't get personal, talking about uh, you know other people's families and all that nonsense. If it's just you know man to man on the court, whatever material you got, it's fair game. Um, I'm not a huge trash talker, obviously, but I love that kind of chatter and getting in that vibe. And somebody starts talking to me, it gets me going. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, all of us come from different basketball backgrounds, but. Trash talk was a part of it in certain, in some way, shape, or form. And uh, like I said, as long as it stays on the court and everybody understands where it's coming from and it's in the spirit of you know competition and uh, gamesmanship, that's that's a beautiful thing.